guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen. In today's video, I would like to review uh, some um, pieces that I recently made. I promised that I would be making um, a few pieces of, um, a, a few new shirts, sorry. Um, I thought the change in weather, spring, summer coming up, I needed to redo um, my shirt collection. And so I had five shirts in mind and I've completed three of those shirts that I wanted to um, go through with you. Um, initially, I wanted to do the Cynthia blouse by Vicky Sews. Haven't done this one yet. That's coming up. I also promised a Jenna. That's been done. The classic shirt, this has been done as well. And Simplicity 1538. So these three have been completed. And this one is in progress right now. It's the orange gingham for this one. So I haven't finished that one yet. I'm working on it. So for right now, I'm going to be talking about the three I have completed. And the two will be um, reviewed in a future video coming up. So um, with these uh, patterns, uh, this is my usual and I'm okay with this. I'm good at this one. So I didn't have any issues except for my fabric is a bit, um, it needed stabilization in some parts like the cuff uh, and the house placket. I don't normally interface the house placket that needed on this one. So I'll show you the mess up that I did um, on this one. Um, let me start out by just going through. Let me grab them one at a time and then we can talk about them. So the first one is going to be the first one is going to be Simplicity 1538. This one, um, I don't know what to say about it except for it's gingham. Um, it's my new love for summer and spring. I absolutely love this. Um, I only had two colors, the orange and this blue, and I decided to do this with a new shirt. So start off by um, talking about the insides. I'm sorry, I'm looking carefully because the insides and the outside look alike. So this is the outside, and I did this little pleat thing in the back right there. And the usual, I do two, um, I'm a loss for words. I do two of this uh, back yoke and I cut my yoke on the diagonal so that I get that little um, diamond shape going on the back. I wanted to break up the stripes. So that's um, the plaid, sorry. So that's what I did with this on here. French uh, seam both arms eye. This is my marking for the chalk and will come out as soon as I wash it again. Um, so this is basically it. It's French seamed all the way on the insides. On the placket, I did the same diagonal feature right there, just to break up the uh, different lines going across. Same thing for right there. There is nothing much going on in the back, but you can see French seam and a tiny hem on the end. Um, I'll add pictures up so that it makes it a bit better for you to see it. But the only thing that's missing from this is the buttons. And I haven't done that yet. I don't know how to do them on my machine. That's something I am yet to do. So I sew them by hand and I hate hand sewing buttons. So it's the last thing I do on my shirts. Um, the cuff is done. I added something different. I did the same um, diagonal thing on the placket on the cuff so it matches. Um, the house placket is not from this pattern. I took it from the two other patterns that I used because they had it and so I like a cleaner finish on the inside of the shirt. 
and you can play with the options of changing the fabric but I I like the way um, the house placket looks or the tower placket looks on the shirts so that's what I'm gonna be doing um, for my shirts going forward because I like it the other way I never seem to get it right and a part of the fabric seems to be stuck in when I tried to turn the, the fabric and, and have that stitch going on there. So this is shirt number one, and I'll put, again, pictures up so you can see it. This one is Simplicity 1538, and I shouldn't have to look for that one because I should know that one by now. Sorry, I just pulled this closer. So this one is the classic shirt pattern right there, and I did view I did view B without the covering of the top when I say covering I'll explain I twist words um, so <laughs> there is the pocket it's white so it's gonna be hard to um, kind of see but I did everything as instructed on this pattern except for putting the flap on top of the pocket I didn't want to have to go through that so I left it out in the event I have to wear a jacket or something with this white shirt or I don't or I want to dress down, um, it works well without the flap for me. So this cotton linen from Fabric Warehouse Direct, I think, I absolutely love it. It was a breeze to sew with. And when I washed this one, it wasn't bad. It came out, it ironed, it ironed well. I kind of regret not buying more, but I don't know what I'll sew with it. But um, for me, with, even with the shirt, I'm going to need to wear a blouse or something camisole under it because it's kind of transparent and I don't want to have whatever I'm wearing, like an undergarment or something like that showing under it. But yeah, it's, it's a great um, fabric. I love the way it sews up, as I said before, and I also love this pattern. Um, what else can I say about this pattern? Oh, I learned something else from this pattern. It's the second time I'm doing it. I think I've made this before in the pink. And when I did, the collar installation was different. So with this pattern, they have you sew the um, collar stand on first. And then you would sew the between the dots right here. And you leave the top open just to insert the collar. So when you insert the collar, you're doing like a top stitch along here. It depends because sometimes I'm able to do this point without catching anything and again they say this is the easiest one but I learned to sew shirts using this method right here so I already have this down it's like learning something new but I did give it a try um, hopefully I I hope to get um, better with this method but I did give it a try Again, buttonholes right here. I haven't opened them up yet because I haven't done the buttons. So here is the inside. Front seam. And the other piece that I learned from this uh, thing is how to insert this, um, the tower. I think that's what they call it. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called, but this piece right here it was perfect for me because you know when you do the French seam and you come all the way down and you have these uh, hems that have a curve, it's difficult to get it done when you're doing the French seam. So with shirts, this comes in and kind of closes that gap for you and conceals whatever mess is hidden under there. Same thing for both sides. And I don't remember if the shirt uh, instructions require two um, yokes or one, but I just do all my shirts with two to make it cleaner. So I can't remember if it said or it needed it or not. But again, this shirt, see how thin it is? You can see through there, yeah. So you're gonna need something under this fabric. Um, again, the little tower that I tried. I think it came out okay. Uh, what else? Uh, another favorite of mine with these shirts is the curb cuff. These shirts that I'm used to sewing have this square closing. I prefer the shirts with this kind of closure on the end. That curve, it just gives it, 
I don't know, should I say feminine? Because I've seen it on male shirts as well. So I don't know. But I just like it. Again, this was a nice make. I think I'll make... I'll think I'll be making more. I shouldn't say I think. I love shirts. And any chance I get to make shirts, I just do. So this is another white. This is going to be my third white shirt. And it's needed because the other one seems to be a bit worn. And again... The way I sew and change size, I think it's it's good when I have uh, shirts in different sizes. So whenever my weight fluctuates or changes, I can draw for it. Right now, I think I made a 10 in this one. I have shirts that are size 14, 10, and 12. So in between, I do. This one, I can't quite remember if it's a 14 or a 12. But in between, I cut from the pattern, but um, when I'm taking my, I still have the same pattern. And the same pattern I cut is a probably the paper pattern that's there. I've cut it, I've had it since I was size 8. I think the pattern was cut in a size 10. Now, I'm bet I was between 12 and a 14. So whenever I'm making the shirt from the same pattern, I just take my measurements and kind of adjust it, add fabric where I need to add fabric. Um, I normally shorten the pattern by an inch front and back when I'm doing it. I used to adjust the, the sleeve length, but I no longer do it because I did it once and I'm wearing a jacket or something under it and it's really short and really uncomfortable on the inside. So I, I no longer do that. I'd rather just make it the length it is and just roll it up. Um, the next one is the Jenna. I wanted to do this shirt so bad that when it came, it was the first thing I did. Um, I love, love, love the pattern. Love the pattern. Again, it's my first make with this one, so I'll definitely make it again. But I'm looking for the perfect fabric. This fabric was like a straight stripe cotton. It's like a brush cotton. I don't know if I can show you in here. It's like a brush cotton. It was okay for the shirt, but it's not my ideal fabric for something like that. So I'm going to look for something that's like a poplin or one of those um, real cotton that you make, like an Oxford cotton to make shirts. I want to be able to do that one with a stripe. I'm looking for a candy stripe. Green and a green candy stripe, red, and a candy stripe blue. So I want all those three. I don't, I'm not sure they'll all be a Jenna. But I want all those three colors in my um, shirt collection. All right, enough of me. So <laughs> the features on the Jenna, forgive me, I'm having a little throat issue. The um, features of the Jenna that I absolutely love is the size of the yoke. It comes all the way down, like mid-back. And then it presents this little cute little thing on the back right there I absolutely love it and I tried playing with what I wanted to show or expose with that little flap and so just little features that I like so I made sure the two little white ones are across from each other again it's just my thing um, I kind of turn the pattern the way they have it on um, the design with the um, patterns right here going horizontal these going vertical just to play on the back a bit and then for the front this huge pocket that I don't know what I'll do with it but it's a short pocket um I like the square edges I shouldn't say square kind of diagonal edges on there with this pocket I tried to put it across so that it ended up on lines and it, I didn't get cross-eyed looking at it um what else Oh, the tar again on this one might be a failure for me, but it, my first try, and I think I got better with the white one. I'm going to show you a big failure on this shirt as well. Remember, I keep it real, showing you the things that I do well and the things that I mess up on. Um, so with this one, when it got to the end, I turned the stripes just to play on it and break it up a bit. Nothing was different about the color. But, um, I messed up. You might not be able to see it, 
but I'll show you um, it's evident in one thing. So I cut, when it's stripes, I'm working with, I cut the patterns, the pattern pieces if it's front, individually, so that I have stripes lining up when I close the shirt and it's not out of line and stuff like that. So I cut them individual on this and apparently I turned one of the patterns the wrong way. <clears throat> and so when I was putting my interfacing on, so this one matches, it's fine. When I was putting the interfacing on and I realized, okay, it's time to put them together. I was like, one's off, one's a different color. You can't see it, but for me, I did. And so here is the mess. I can't find it, I know it's there. Okay, I put the interfacing on the wrong side and I had to quickly pull it off because I had no more of this left. I had to quickly pull it off and do some sort of scraping, picking to get it off. But I turned this in far deeper than I would have because I wanted this um, interface piece that was incorrectly added to be more on the inside so that you didn't really see it. Yeah, so that's just um, my little failure right there, but it's on the inside of the shirt. The little thing, the little tab, I just played with lines so that when you're looking at the peekaboo there, it, it stands out because it's a different um, um, direction for that. But that was it. No, there was one other thing with this shirt. Um, for this one, I think I cut a 10 depending on the size. I looked at the measurement. I think I cut a 10. Um, I would go bigger the next time because I was looking for a big shirt. I go by the bust measurement and I thought that was going to be enough, but no, I need to go way bigger. So it's still a big shirt, but the look I was going for, no. So um, the other thing I learned with the, um, let me find it. With the tower or the house placket, whichever way you want to call it, with this one, the two patterns um, have it, but with the Jenna, it's one. It's a one piece. So you'd put the one piece of the pattern right here and allow you to slit and keep both things together. With this one, it gave you the option to cut the, not the option, it told you to cut the house uh, placket in two pieces. And what that did, I'm going to put up the pink shirt I, I um, made using this pattern. What that does, it allows you to be more flexible with any designs that you'd want. Now with this one, it's a one piece pattern. So you'd have to use one fabric in here. What if this was a blue or a white and I wanted to go with another color in on this placket right here and another color in on right here? I wouldn't be able to do it. That's me. I wouldn't be able to do it with the Jenna. But with this classic shirt pattern, I'll be able to do it because the house placket on this pattern is two separate pieces so I can interchange a fabric that I want to use. So that's the only difference with that. And I'm kind of happy I made them together not knowing that. So if I'm looking for a shirt, I can use that option. Also, because this shirt has the curved cuff if I'm doing my other shirts, which is the 1538, I'll do that one as well. Or any other shirt I'm working on and I want that cuff, I'll remember that this has it because it's something that I really look for in the shirts. And so um, having done the uh, three pieces, I kind of um, enjoy the process except for I was rushing because I wanted to get everything done, but I couldn't. Again, I only got these three done. Oh, I went on yapping without showing you, but everything again is done in French seam. And forgive me, I'm looking to see if it's the back or the front or the inside or outside. Yeah, but everything is done French seam. And because it's the first time I'm making this pattern, I think there is some room for improvement, or I should say opportunities exist for me to improve on the, on the make. So I'm looking forward to making a few more 
And again, I have the two others, the Cynthia and Vogue 8772. I was really hoping to finish it, but no. Okay, here is a perfect example of the placket I was referencing. So this one is the one from the Jenna that I'm using on my Vogue 8772 because I no longer use that strip. I rather close it with this. And I was saying with this pattern, this would be two pieces, one piece like this and a separate piece. And I think depending on the shirt you're making, they're both um, useful options. But yeah, those are my call outs right now. I'm gonna be trying to finish those other shirts for my next video as well as trying to get this orange and white gingham done and perhaps cut a white jeans. Who knows, pray for me, I'm gonna need it because I'm really scared of that zipper fly. But anyway, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, bye.